All right, guys, we have here a 2000, <laughs> I mean, a 1985 Club Car DS. This one here, we have a crank no start or barely start situation. See, it wants to kind of like start and then it dies out. And then it just won't do it again until I feather the throttle a little bit and try to get it to start, but uh, so what we're going to do on this one is we're going to start with the carburetor, which I'm thinking is the problem. We're going to pull it, get it cleaned, put it back together, and it should fire right up. I've had the battery on charge for a few hours because it was a little weak going into this, so I wanted to just top it off, and but I wanted to give it a few hours to do that so when we're trying to get it to start, we're not uh, sucking it dry. The only thing I didn't like about this design was the air box. You need tools to take it apart. It's not just clips. This can be a little tricky sometimes. I like to find my little stubby screwdriver for this. This will be only the second 85 Club Car DS that I've ever worked on. The first one was one of my very own that I've actually recently sold. It was a good strong cart. wonder how different all these screws are going to be. And what's really neat about these things is they all have electric fuel pumps. And it's a Mitsubishi electric fuel pump, which is kind of nice. Nice, not nice, I don't know. Well, I guess it all depends on how you look at it. Okay, so this is where this little tool comes in handy. It's a quarter drive attachment that allows you to stick in these hex bits. Definitely not coming apart as easily as I had hoped. Wow, that's like cross threaded or something. with this side here. Okay, that one seems to be coming apart much easier then. Alright, at least I know I'm doing it right because I dropped another nut. Okay, so you have to basically remove this. Wow, that air filter's not in bad shape. A little browning, but it's not bad. Not bad enough to change. You remove that, and then you have some 10 millimeter nuts on the inside here. No. Why is that? Uh... Oh, that's right. You know what? I forgot they have a, a safety bracket in there. See those little tabs that are over the nuts? You have to basically grab them with the pliers, bend them in towards the center, and then you can get a socket on there. That's what happens when you only work on a certain generation of these things once or twice. You have a tendency of forgetting what is really needed to do a certain job. Let's see if we can get in here with the pliers. And you don't have to go nuts bending them out. You just need to get them out enough to where you can get a socket on those. There we go. Now we can get our 10 millimeter on there. Yeah, that's right. I completely forgot about those. 
EasyGo uses a similar type of setup on the, the, the fan on the inside of the motor for the, uh, the Robin engines. There's six 10 millimeter bolts that hold the fan to the flywheel and it has a very similar arrangement to this where they have those little safety tabs so you don't end up you know it's basically just a safety setup it's kind of neat and here's this, here's what they look like basically just two couple of tabs you pull them away and then you can get the socket on and then you have this plate which goes on in a certain direction it only goes on one way because you have the breather port you have to watch out for that all right we're uh basically freed from that the air box is held on by some other hardware i'm gonna move the throttle cable out of the way this is the breather tube there's a bracket on the bottom that holds the air cleaner on you don't really have to take it off if you bend it back out of the way, you can get the carburetor off, but no, no trouble. All right, so now we're going to I'm gonna pry up here. It's just clipped in. Take that control off. Remove the spring. Oop, and drop it on the ground. That's how you know you're doing it right. And then we're going to get a 10 millimeter wrench and take that off. It's a little tight in here, so it's it's wide open to see it, but getting tool access is not the same. Alright, so can't back that off totally. I'm actually going to take off this bracket right here. Otherwise I won't be able to get in there with the wrench. to remove that second. Hopefully this bolt will come out. Doesn't feel like it's gonna. Oh yeah, it is, okay. And this is basically gonna remove all of this control hardware right here. And give us a little better access to the carburetor. So there definitely is a lot more stuff to take apart on these older carts in some cases. There we go. We're going to replace that fuel filter. Fuel line comes right off. I'm wondering if our electric fuel pump died. I'm going to check that right now by Turning the key on. No, there's fuel there, so I don't really think that's our problem. Now, our, our electric fuel pump is working just fine. That is definitely not our problem. Okay, so it's definitely got to be in the carburetor. Got to be in the carburetor. All right, let's get this bad boy apart. Look at the size of this thing. Look at how big the bowl is. Let me get this light out of the way so I'm not blinding it. But look at how ginormous the bowl is. I mean, here's my fist. Okay, so you guys have seen, I mean, look at this. Look at how huge that is. Compared to the current modern carburetors, it's so huge. But it also has the same ports on it, basically. It's, it's, it's got the same principle. There's no choke on the carburetor, it's built into the airstream. You got a port here you can take apart and clean, which is basically in the same spot. You have your your mix adjust screw right there. And then everything internally. All right, let's get this thing apart. All right, so we're gonna attempt this up here. This is a 13 millimeter. Tight. There we go. Okay. All right, 
so I'm going to remove. Oh, no, no. I'm just going to move it and put it in the tank here. Smells kind of gnarly. This is a cap. Okay, twist it. Broke free. Yeah, I'd say that's um, a few years worth of junk in there. Bit, bit of rust. We'll clean that right out. Should be good. And you can see this is the port right here that it pulls that through. So that's probably blocked. Let me clean this bowl out here. All right, this one's been, this one looks like it hasn't been cleaned in a while, so I'm gonna have to get in here with a, a wire brush and kind of rough it up so it actually comes out, because. Not trying to scratch up the metal, I just want to break off some of this hard stuff that's in here. And make sure we get all the loose, chunky bits because I'm going to be right back doing this. You can see the bottom of the carburetor is all pitted from being rusty for so long, which is going to happen. All right, so that was the hard part. <laughs> Move that cap there. Let's see, it doesn't look like that's going to come out without a fight. Is there, I already see dirt inside the carburetor. Well, that came off fairly easily. And there's the main. Take it out of there, but let's see how. Oh, we got good flow. I am going to take it apart. Hopefully, we can take it apart. No, you probably can't see what I'm doing. Apologize for that. It's it's tough. You have to hold the big part with a wrench, and then you can get a screwdriver in the little part, and it should <coughs> come apart. Yeah, see, we got good flow. Yeah. That's good. And it's not dirty inside, so we know that it's... I mean, it had some junk in there, but we're good. I'm going to take the little brass bit. Just blow it out in the opposite direction to make sure it's clean. And then we're going to... Reinstall it there. Now what I'll do is I'll hold this part here with the wrench. And then you grab this part here with the screwdriver and then try to keep your screwdriver centered so you don't create any issues. And then snug. You don't need to go crazy trying to make that super tight. It doesn't have to be. And then I'll just rinse it out one more time. There we go. Okay, let's see if we can get this out here. Oh yeah, look at that. See, I like this carburetor because I can use my big tools. I don't have to use the... I don't have to use the usual screwdriver. Okay, there's our main. This is actually in two pieces as well. 
I know I've never shown how to take these apart, but I'm grabbing the smooth part with the pliers gently, not too tight. And then I'll grab the center and there we go. Sometimes they don't like to separate and you have to squeeze a little harder. Let's see, there's the inside. Usually you don't have to take this apart. Usually. But I don't think I've ever showed taking it apart. So I figured I would. Now I'll send carburetor down this or cleaner down here. Okay. And when you see all the yellow coming off of your parts that you're washing, that just means you're taking all the nasty gre or nasty old gas off that you know you really want to get out of the system. And then to put it back together. That's exactly the opposite. I'll hold the main shaft and then screw in the center jet here. I really don't know the technical term for it. All I know is it comes apart and it needs to be cleaned. Now I'll shoot down the throat here. Make sure that's good. I'll shoot down this throat. All the little ports here will on that one, on that one. I'm not taking the float off this time. Uh, reason for that is these older carburetors when they get brittle like this, sometimes you can break the float. And it is, there is gas flowing through it. We're gonna, I'll show you that right now. Put a little bit of carburetor cleaner in here. And I can see it bubbling out of the float valve. This can of carburetor cleaner is almost empty. All right, so that's, that's why I don't really feel the need to take that float off. If you're ever removing the center stem and only the main you know, the center part comes out and the main guts don't. There's a wider, you can use a wider blade screwdriver to get that out. It will come out. Okay, and we'll insert this. I know this stuff has like names, like one's a pilot port, one's an idle port, a low idle, low high idle. You know, it's all, all kinds of different names for this stuff. I just don't know what they are. I'm not familiar with the terminology as much as I am knowing how to fix it. Take it apart, clean it, put it back together. I know how to take it apart, I know how to clean it, and I know how to put it back together. Okay, that is that. Now we get to put it back in on the motor here. Okay, looks like we can begin our reverse order reinstallation here. See, there is no water in this fuel this time around. This was just dirty carburetor. And many times, many ways, Merry Christmas to you. Just kidding. Many, many times that is all you need to do is remove the carburetor. You know, if you need to, when you're taking these things apart, all you need to do is find a way to prop up your cell phone. If your cell phone is capable of film and video, if you have a smartphone, you should be able to do that. Go on Amazon and or eBay and get yourself a little cell phone generic tripod holder thing. Set your phone up on your cart somehow that makes you feel comfortable. And uh, like I have my camera propped up on here right now. It's just propped up on the seat with one of those jobby tripod, gorilla pod things. Videotape yourself taking your the carburetor off. So that way, if you get lost, you have a, you have something to revert to to check and see if you're doing it, you're putting it back together correctly. Like when I first started working on golf carts, I used my video camera and I would record taking my cart apart, and then if I got stuck, I would revert to it for detailed information to kind of help guide me putting everything back together. That, that, that was if I forgot what I was doing. I mean, nine times out of ten, I kind of 
didn't forget because I have that mechanical inclination, which is why I'm a golf cart mechanic. I used to be a golf course assistant mechanic where I'd work on some of the golf course equipment. And a lot that's where a lot of this knowledge came from was working on a golf course. I worked at a golf course for about 10 years before I started doing this as my full-time gig. I have a lot of knowledge of this stuff. Okay, so granted, I don't, I don't have a super lot of knowledge on certain specific topics. I just know how to fix it the way I learned how to fix it. Like for instance, I had somebody comment on my starter generator video, how to change brushes in a starter generator, that you need to sand down the armature. That's fine. You know, I, I like the constructive criticism. It wasn't, you know, being mean about it or anything. Just said it was a critical step that I missed. But uh, I've never sanded the brushes or sanded the armature down on a starter generator. I've never, uh, I've never had to. I've never needed to, I should say. Why? Because that wasn't something I was taught to do when changing the starter generator brushes. It was just mostly, mostly because time was of the essence. You know, get the golf cart in the shop, get it fixed, and get it out because it's needed out on the course. Most times, it was the uh, utility carts that I'd be working on. It wouldn't be at, like the golf course for the golfers, uh, golf carts. Uh, it'd be like the, you know, club cart turf two models or turf ones. You know, the utility carts. They'd be the ones that I'd be working on, mostly. That's what I always worked on. All right, so once you get your bolts tightened down, be sure to bend back your tabs, your safety tabs. So yeah, that's where, that's where my knowledge comes from. And when I, before I worked on a golf course, golf course equipment is some of the weirdest looking, most powerful, and most complex but simple equipment I've ever worked on. Most of it was Toro. All right, and they use these springs. These are basically um, to take up the slack. So there's no like play between the two linkages. It just keeps that slack tensioned. Okay, so see how when I step on the pedal, I can disconnect the, the governor. This is the governor from the rear end. It's disconnected and you see the pedal goes through this box, runs through a little cable. There's this arm that's connected to the side of the motor, which if there's internal whatever's on that, I'm not sure, not 100%. I've never had this engine apart before. But you can see it pulls this arm out, pulls this linkage here, then opens the throttle. And then at the same time, it pulls and pushes on this rod here, which goes back to the governor in the rear. I will loosen up this and this. So yeah, that's where my golf cart knowledge comes from. So yeah, I worked, like I said, I worked at that golf course for nearly, nearly 10 years. And then after that, I was running this business a little bit in between, kind of doing like the hit and miss stuff. I would take a customer here and there. And then after a while, I got to really enjoy working on golf carts, mainly because they're simple machines. I mean, they're very simplistic. There's really not a whole lot you can screw up on them. I mean, the newer carts are getting stupidly ridiculous. I mean, they're putting things on golf carts that don't really need to be there. Easy go. You and your stupid electric brake. But I really enjoy this. This is something that I've, I've, I have really enjoy doing. It took me many years to figure out what I really like to do. So if you're somebody who's struggling with trying to find a career in life, it took me many, 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 many years... This thing is missing pieces, but I don't want to really get into that. All right, so before we go ahead and put all the air box and stuff back together, let's see if it fires up. All right, instantly got fuel. Our air box, which you see that guys, that's 
that's one thing you got to realize with golf carts. Usually it's the simplest thing. And I hope that with my videos, you don't have to be intimidated by the carburetor. That is a result. That is a successful result. As we'll demonstrate here. All right, guys, that is going to conclude this video. I want to thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Be sure to check the video's description for links to products that I use every single day to make these videos and run my business. Be sure to check out all of my websites and social media links down below. If you have any questions about this or any other project, be sure to leave a comment down below. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And as always, we will see you in the next video.